Welcome to Friendship Moments. I'm so glad you're listening in tonight. Today I'm going to talk about something a little different that you won't usually hear from a Baptist pulpit, and that's uh, Buddha. You know, Buddha was a, lived about 2,500 years ago, and he was in India, and uh, he never claimed to be God. And in fact, he, ever, he said he wasn't even a prophet. He was just an enlightened human being. And uh, the story I want to read comes from his writings, and it's called Mental Suffering and the Mustard Seed. Now, Buddha, he describes suffering as both physical and mental condition. One of the most famous stories about Buddha involves the wife of a very wealthy man. After her only child had succumbed to an illness, she was devastated and she begged everyone that she could find to help her find a way to bring her son back. And somebody told her to go and see Buddha and ask him to help her. And when she explained what had happened to Buddha, he remained very patient and sympathetic. And he tells her that before he can bring her son back to life, she must bring him a handful of mustard seeds from a family that has never had death. Well, she begins searching from one household to the next, but soon finds out that no such family exists. Every home she visited had experienced loss and death. So she returned to Buddha, and after realizing that she will never find a family that is free of death, he comforts her and shares with her the truth that suffering and death is a part of life that everyone must go through. Tonight, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Apostle Paul. I know Ronnie's not here to hear it. He can back me up. <laughs> but uh, Paul was named Saul at birth. He was born in Tarsus. And Tarsus was a, was a very, I guess you would call it a metropolitan type city. It was a lot of knowledge and, and things of that sort going there, a lot of education. And, and Tarsus is a very modern type city for that time. And uh, I heard a story one time about there were also very cruel people there. That if you had committed a murder in Tarsus, they would take the body of the person that you had murdered and strap it to your back. And you would have to wear that body wherever you went, when you, when you went to sleep, where you went to eat, whatever you did. And eventually that rotting corpse that was on your back would infect your body and you would die too very painful, cruel way to kill somebody, but that's what they did. And Paul was there, and he, uh, he was of the tribe of Benjamin, and he was, he was educated as, uh, as a Pharisee. And this, this position earned him a great bit of uh, respect and influence among the Jews. He likewise had a quality background, education in both Hebrew Bible and the Jewish tradition. This was the backdrop to which his hatred for the new Christian movement sprang up and around Jerusalem. He had a strong, intense hatred for Christians. He believed that they were a sect. Ironically, he thought he was doing God a favor, for he thought the Christians were blaspheming the name of God. So he was kind of doing things his way. <laughs> well, the Apostle Paul was a descendant of the tribe of Benjamin, like I said, and he had he had the status of Roman citizenship. And upon the completion of his education, he became a Pharisee. Now, what is a Pharisee? Well, the word means to be separate or detach. From whom did these, sep these Pharisees separate? Well, they separated from the priest or the clerics that they didn't believe with. And they were, of course, they were separate from the common people and from the Gentiles, of course, and the Jews who embraced the other types of beliefs that they didn't believe in. And they were also separated from uh, certain political groups. Now, all of these groups of people, the Pharisees would have been determined to avoid in their resolution to separate themselves from any type of impurity prescribed by the Levitical law, or more specifically, 
their interpretation of the law. Now, Apostle Paul was not only educated, he was also learned in a trade. He was a tent maker, which was a very profitable business to be in. But it was also hostile towards Christians that he had them dragged from their homes and thrown into prison. He was present at the stoning of Stephen, the first martyr. He held their cloaks while they did the stoning. He was given his approval. Later Saul went to the high priest to acquire letters to the synagogue in Damascus to arrest Christians in there and bring them back to prison. Those letters were nothing more than an arrest warrant for Christians. Well, on the road to Damascus, as he was drawn near the city of Damascus, a great light from heaven suddenly flashed at him. He fell to the ground, and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And then Paul asked, Who are you, Lord? And the voice answered him, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. Get up and go into the city, and there you will be told what to do. Well, the other men who were traveling with him were terrified because they had heard the voice, but they didn't see anybody. And when Paul got up from the ground, he was blind. The travelers that were with him, they took him to Damascus, where he was blind for three days, and he didn't eat. In Acts 9, verses 10 through 16, in Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias, devout of the law and highly respected. The Lord called on him, in a vision, he said, Ananias? Yes, Lord, he answered. So I'm kind of thinking maybe Ananias, he might have been a believer. Did you know that? He very possibly could have been. Well, he was then anyway. <laughs> well, the Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with the authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and to their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Well, you know, Paul did suffer. He was thrown in prison. He was beaten. He was shipwrecked. There's no telling what all they'd done to him. And finally, he was beheaded. But you know, two-thirds of the New Testament that we have are written by him, by Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. Let us pray. Our most gracious heaven, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today. I ask that you would increase my wisdom and understanding as I read. Speak to me through your word. I pray that your word would create in me a clean mind and a renewed heart and a desire to know you more. Hide your words in the folds of my heart for times of need by myself and others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.